Today we are going to discuss diffraction. What is diffraction? And after that, we'll do single slit diffraction. We'll go for the details of single slit diffraction. We'll try to find out expression for the position of any secondary maxima or minima in the diffraction pattern there. We'll also obtain expression for width of central maxima. After that, we'll do intensity pattern, what we get in single slit diffraction. So all these we'll discuss in today's discussion. First of all, let's see what is diffraction. It is the phenomena of bending of light near the edges of an obstacle and entering into the region of geometrical shadow. Remember, diffraction is a wave phenomena. So it is exhibited by sound as well as by light. But here, we just try to confine our discussion to diffraction of light. So, diffraction, it is the phenomena, phenomena of bending of light near the edges of an obstacle and entering into the region of geometrical shadow. So that is a phenomena of diffraction. Just to explain or to make the things clear, let's take one example. Suppose we take one arrangement. Here we have a source of light. And uh, we are taking here AB as an opaque object. So this is your AB here is an opaque object and this is your screen. So if you put a light source in front of an opaque object on the screen we'll have this PQ as the region of geometrical shadow. Whereas beyond PQ, this part and this, these will be the illuminated region. So this is what we get in the normal observation there. If object, opaque object is there, then here it will be the shadow formation and beyond that it will be the illuminated region. Let's take another setup. Here, this is again, it is your source here, but this AB is now a slit here. And uh, again, here you have the PQ. Now, this time, this will be your illuminated region. Whereas beyond PQ, that means this part as well as this portion, they will be your region of geometrical shadow. So on the screen we get it like this. So these are the two arrangement which we are using and this, what we are observing here is very common which we observe in day to day life. But suppose we go on changing the dimension of this obstacle, whether it is an opaque object or the slit. If the size of these obstacle, it becomes comparable with the wavelength of the wave which is emitted by the source. In that case, there, what will happen? You will have the light 
entering even in the region of the geometrical center. That means here we will get the pattern which is bright and dark there. Okay. And if any bright pattern is there, it means light is reaching there. So that means that is definitely a region of the geometrical shadow. But if you get light here in this part or this part there, so that will indicate that uh, light has been near the edges of the obstacle and it has entered into the region of the geometrical shadow. So, but main thing is there, this will observe more prominently when the size of obstacle becomes comparable with the size of the wavelength of the wave. So, it is observed more distinctly when size of obstacle is comparable with wavelength of wave. Then we will get a diffraction observed more distinctly or prominently. So this is uh, the two uh, setup there which explains how we observe diffraction there or where we can observe diffraction especially the bending uh, will indicate that the light is entering into the region which should have been the region of the geometrical shadow. Uh, you can take uh, one more example. Suppose uh, there are uh, two compartments or say two rooms are there uh, without the ceiling there. Here you have uh, this is as A and this is B. If any light source is there which is giving out uh, light there, you will not get light in this part because uh, it will be are uh, not reaching in this particular part there. They will mostly move in a straight line path and will go like this. But in place of light, if you have a source of sound, say you have a music player there or anything is there, or if someone is speaking there, you will be able to get the sound even in this part. So here there is bending of sound there. But we are not observing light there. The reason is wavelength of the wave, that is the sound wave here, it is comparable with the dimension of the obstacle, like the doors and the windows. If you are taking, in that case, they are in the meter range. Obviously, here also the wavelength of the sound wave will be in meter range there. So you will be able to get this bending of the sound more prominently there. You will be able to get the sound in this part. But if you consider, suppose, light wave, in that case, its wavelength is very small and it is not comparable with the dimension of the obstacle or size of the obstacle. So we do not have the light bending here in day-to-day -day life, especially for the cases like this. But if suppose you want to observe diffraction there, if you take two uh, saving blades, new saving blades if you take and you put it uh, there so that their sharp edges are touching one another and through that gap if you try to observe any light source then you will find there will be alternate bright and dark pattern there so those dark patterns is indicating that uh, light is missing there in that part or it is not reaching there and the other part is there which is bright so it is indicating that light must have moved in that particular region there. So there you will find that near the edges of those obstacles, the wave bends there. And this is more pronounced when the size of the obstacle and the wavelength of the wave, they are of same order or they are of nearly same size. Let's take single slit diffraction. Now here, we have taken AB as a slit. Okay, this is the slit AB. And uh, this S is representing a source of monochromatic light. Point sources here. 
L1 and L2, these are the two lenses which we have put on either side of this slit. And uh, the distance between the lens and the source is equal to the focal length of the lens L1. So that means this L1 and L2 are on either side of this slit AB. Whereas the source is kept at a distance equal to the focal length of the first lens L1. Similarly, on the other side, we have uh, another lens L2 and at a distance equal to its focal length, that is F2, we put the screen. So this is your F2 and this is the distance between the lens L2 and the screen. We are taking the distance between the slit and the screen as capital D. And the size of this uh, slit is equal to small d. So now, here let's take, this is your point source. Rays are coming out of this. They will pass through this lens. And since it is at a distance equal to its focal length, obviously all rays will go parallel to one another. So in that case, these parallel rays from L1 will pass through the slit. And then it will go and strike the second lens L2. Again, once they pass, those parallel rays, if they are passing through the second lens, they will meet at the focus because they are parallel. They are striking parallel to this particular lens. And now they will be converged to a point that is the focus of this lens. So they will be meeting on the focal plane. And here we have put the screen. So on the screen, we uh, expect a bright spot there, indicating that all the rays are reaching there and they are forming an uh, image there. But what we observe, if the size of this obstacle becomes comparable with the wavelength of the wave emitted by this source, we get alternate bright and dark pattern on this screen. So if any rays is reaching at point other than this O, it simply means they have deviated from their path or they have bent from their path. Suppose I assume that uh, those rays which have bent at an angle theta, like one is this coming from C, other is this one. Okay, say so all have this angle of bending as theta. So all those rays will once again be parallel to one another. They are bending at an angle theta there. So they all will be parallel to one another. So after passing through this lens, they will once again meet on its focal plane and they are meeting at the point P suppose. So this is at a distance y from the center, that is O. We'll see what will be the conditions so that they are meeting there and uh, whether they will form uh, maxima or minima. So that we'll just try to observe. Here, you can see, if I take this particular triangle, that is your uh, POC, we have tan theta equals to OP by OC, OP by OC and that will be equals to Y by D. Let's take another thing. You have here the slit AB. This one has the size D. If I drop a perpendicular from this one on the rays which have bent at an angle say theta, this AM, this is the foot uh, perpendicular dropped on these rays. So that means this BM, if I can, uh, okay, if this angle is theta, obviously this will be 90 minus theta. This is 90. So how much will be this angle? This is also theta. So now in this triangle, in triangle ABM, here 
if you consider bm by ab this will be sin theta so bm we can write as a ab sin theta and what is this ab this is your d and if this is d then this d into sin theta this is your bm now if you take for a small value of theta for a small theta tan theta is nearly equals to theta and that is equals to your sin theta so that means here i can substitute for this one nearly equals to d into tan theta and that will be equals to d and what is this tan theta y by d so this bm will represent now as y d by capital d remember this bm will also indicate the path difference between the waves which is moving from point a and one which is going from point b that means this is the extra path difference between the two now let's take if this a b which we have taken and the waves are going like this we have dropped the perpendicular this b m now if this b m is equals to lambda if this b m is lambda what we do we divide this slit that is uh, this d which was there into two equal parts so this ac is equals to cb now obviously here we have taken all these parallel if this is bm is your lambda obviously this will be lambda by 2 because this is equal to this and these two are parallel so if you take a wave which is going from point a and the one which is going from point c they will have a path difference of lambda by 2 so in that case on the screen they will meet destructively because they have path difference of lambda by 2 that is the odd multiple of half wave pair suppose if i take another wave which is just below a and another one is there which is just below c they will also have a path difference of lambda by 2 so they will also meet destructively there so you take any wave in the part ac there will be a corresponding point from where the wave is going which has a path difference of lambda by 2 between the two so on the screen they will be meeting destructively similarly suppose if i take that for some other higher angle this bm is supposed to lambda because if you are changing the angle there in that case this one will change so like here this angle is changing so obviously this one will be also change so now if it is supposed to lambda we divide this one into four equal parts so if this is c this is suppose e and this is your theta so that means this one will have a path difference of lambda by 2 this one will have lambda and this is your 3 lambda by 2 that means a wave which is going from point a and the one which is going from point e they have a path difference of lambda by 2 so they will be meeting destructively there for any wave which is going from first part there is a wave in the second part so that they meet destructively as they have a path difference of lambda by 2 similarly all waves which are going from the third part there is a wave in the fourth part where the path difference is lambda by 2 so they will be meeting there destructively so on the screen you will get a point of secondary minimum there you can take higher one also if it is suppose your three lambda will divide it into six part if it is four lambda will divide it into eight parts like that and in all such cases there it will be giving you the points of secondary minima there let's take now another 
case or we can take it uh, in general for this particular case also we can get the condition so in general in general if path difference that is your path difference is your n lambda what we are getting we are getting points of secondary minima there what was the path difference this was the path difference y d by d so this is your n lambda this is there for points of secondary minima so y what you will get you will get a n lambda d by d so what we take if n is equals to 1 y1 will be your lambda d by d this is your position of first secondary minima if y if n is equals to 2 in that case uh, y2 will be your 2 lambda d by d this is position of second secondary minima okay and in general y n this is your n lambda d by d this is position of nth secondary minima so from this you can get the position of secondary minima on this tree if it is asked what is or the position of the second secondary minima you can put n equals to 2 and get the position so this way using this formula you can get the position of any secondary minima on this tree now let's take and that this bm this one is 3 lambda by 2 We have taken lambda, 2 lambda, 3 lambda, 4 lambda. Now we are taking, suppose this is your 3 lambda by 2. We are now dividing it into 3 equal parts. So suppose it is your uh, E and this is your F. So if this slit D is divided into 3 equal parts, then the wave which is going from A and E, they will have a path difference of lambda by 2. This will be lambda, this is your 3 lambda, 3 lambda by 2. So now what we observe, for the wave which is going from A and the one which is going from E, they have a path difference of lambda by 2. So they will be meeting destructively on the screen. Similarly, you take uh, any wave in the first part, there will be a wave going from second part where the path difference is lambda by 2 and hence they will meet destructively there so they are meeting destructively but the waves which is going from the third part will remain unneutralized so what will happen on the screen you will get secondary maxima there similarly if i have suppose uh, this bm equals to 5 lambda by 2 we divide the slit into 5 parts this is suppose lambda by 2 this is lambda this is 3 lambda by 2 this is 2 lambda so it is suppose your e f g h so again you can see for any wave which is going from first part there is a corresponding wave in the second part where the path difference is lambda by 2 so they will be meeting destructively similarly you take any wave going from third part there is a wave in the fourth part where path difference is lambda by 2 so they will be meeting destructively but the wave which is going from the fifth part that remains unneutralized so what will happen on the screen you will get the point of secondary maxima there 
same way if it is a instead of 5 lambda by 2 if it is 7 lambda by 2 9 lambda by 2 if it is the odd multiple of half waves in that case you will be getting the points of secondary maxima on this screen so what we can write so if path difference here this is your 2n plus 1 lambda by 2 we are getting the points of secondary maxima there on this screen what was this path difference we have this y d by d this is your 2n plus 1 lambda by 2 so y will be equals to 2n plus 1 lambda d by 2d so y is equals to 2n plus 1 lambda d by 2d now again if we take uh, if n is equals to 1 in that case what we'll get y1 will be equals to 3 lambda d by 2d this is position of first secondary maxima similarly if i take uh, n equals to 2 then y2 will be equals to 5 lambda d by 2d this is position of second secondary maximum and in general if you take yn this is your 2n plus 1 lambda d by 2d this is position of nth secondary maximum so this is how you can get the position of any secondary maxima on this screen just by using this particular formula let's now take a width of central maxima Here you can observe that on the screen we have the waves reaching there and they will be superimposing with one another. So they will produce a bright spot there. Followed by alternate dark and bright pattern there. So the central one is a bright one. So if I want to know what is the width of that central maximum, we can find out at what position the first secondary minima is formed. So that particular distance from the center, like here, suppose I have, this is the point where the first secondary minima is being produced. So that is your lambda d by d. On this side also, it will be the same. So that means this particular position or this particular distance will give you the width of the central maxima. So how we get that one? It will be two times position of first secondary minimum. And what is this? This is your lambda d by d. So that means the width of the central maxima will be how much? So width is equals to 2 lambda d by d. So there is the width of central maximum. So it is 2 times lambda d by d. Let's now take intensity variation plot for this single slit diffraction. So here on x axis we have the distance or the position there. On y axis we have taken the intensity. That is the intensity of the pattern which we are getting on this screen. So here you can see the central one as it is a bright one, its intensity will be maximum. And after that, the intensity goes on decreasing on either side. So that and that one will also decrease very rapidly. At distance lambda d by d, that is the position where the first secondary minima is formed. So here it is the minimum intensity there. At 2 lambda d by d, 3 lambda d by d, you have the minimum intensity. For the maxima there, first secondary 
maximum is at this particular position second one is here because the central one is the bright one already it is a bright one so in the same other side also you can get the same that is at a distance minus lambda d by d minus 2 lambda d by d minus 3 lambda d by d you will get the minima there secondary minima so this is the plot of variation of intensity Next thing we can discuss that is the difference between interference and diffraction. If you take the difference between interference and diffraction, the first point is that in interference, it is due to superposition of the wavelets coming out from two coherent sources. Whereas in diffraction, it is the wavelets coming out from the different parts of the same wavefront. So there, in interference, you have uh, waves coming out from two coherent sources and here these are the waves coming out from different parts of the same wavefront there. Second difference is that in interference, fringes are of equal width. But in diffraction, you'll find central one has a different width and then the width goes on changing there. In interference, you have the intensity variation between the points of maxima and points of minima that is the bright and dark because in interference you will have the points there of minima which where it may be zero or nearly zero it is very less so the contrast is high but in diffraction it is not there that variation will go on decreasing between the maxima and the minima there or the bright and the dark pattern what we are getting at uh, some other point that one will be undistinguishable in interference all the bright fringes there they will be of same intensity but uh, in diffraction you'll find that the central one has the maximum intensity then the intensity goes on decrease so these are some of the important differences between interference and diffraction.